So for those of you who can see, donning the stars stuff today, they got a huge victory last night, so you know we gotta represent them today as we get into a ton of sporting news. And y'all, there is a ton to get into today. So if you're checking out this first video, be sure to stick around the channel because we're going to be uploading a few more videos today because there's a lot to talk about. So to make sure you don't miss any of that, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell button down there, like the video, and drop a comment down below to let me know what you think. But with all of that being said, let's get into it because last night the Lakers were incredible. They dropped 80 points in the first half, which is unbelievable, and I don't think that you're going to have a hard time losing dropping 80 points in the first half right like that's incredible all of that while AD was injured so I think this series is pretty much well over I mean as far as the first few rounds within the Western Conference playoffs I've never really been too worried about the Lakers getting out of those rounds right I mean sure don't get me wrong Dame Dollar and them are going to just make it impossible and make it very difficult for anybody to just sweep them and get past them because they're so ferocious. The way they play, they have way too much self-respect out there. But with all of that, like, I think that we still need to be very impressed with how good LeBron has been in these playoffs. This is not a spry rookie. This is a seasoned vet out here balling just out of his mind. I mean, being a top five player in the bubble when before he was really struggling. And it, it's actually hilarious when you talk about LeBron James because when you talk about LeBron James struggling, it is a great night for 98% of the rest of the league. I mean, 23 points for LeBron and we're looking around saying, where were you at? That's the kind of expectation he has put out, right, wrong, or indifferent, but LeBron is right back to just crushing those expectations night in and night out. I can't wait to see how this series ends. I expect the Lakers to close it out next game, go ahead and move forward. But that wasn't the only intriguing news out of the NBA. And in fact, something that I've been waiting on for a while because I genuinely haven't thought it was going to work for some time has now kind of come to fruition and I really don't know how to feel about it. With Britt Brown being fired from the 76ers, I think it's safe to say that that project is all but done at this point. I mean, it's incredible to think that you have Embiid and Ben Simmons and you just can't get anything done. And I understand last year's loss to the Raptors was heartbreaking. The way it came down to the last second shot, the way that shot went in. But you cannot lose like that last year, right? So heartbreaking. And then come into these playoffs just flat and just get swept. And that's the thing. If they would have took it seven and looked really good and maybe some things happen, we can talk about keeping this lineup together. But at the end of four games, you get completely swept. The way I look at it is I think it's time to just completely disband the team, get some trade value, start again. Now, when I say disband the team, I don't mean ship everybody away. Personally, if I'm looking at either Ben Simmons or Joel Embiid, I'm keeping Embiid. Why? Because I think it's much easier to build around Embiid than it is to build around Ben Simmons. And why do I say that? Ben Simmons has attempted almost as many NBA three-point shots as I have. But in all seriousness, like, that's very hard, and it's not necessarily detrimental to your team to have a guy that just doesn't shoot. But it makes it more difficult to build a supporting cast around him when that guy who doesn't want to shoot wants to play point guard. Because what happens is when you have a certified stud at big man like Embiid, those two can't play off of each other because there's so much crowding in the middle of the court, specifically around the goal. I mean, there's no way for them both to be just super, super, super effective and maximize the just the potential of everybody on the team because already your two-star players are fighting for space in the bottom of the court. So all that being said, if I'm the 76ers, I'm keeping Embiid and trading Ben Simmons. And this is not a debate or an assertion that Ben Simmons is a certifiably worse player than Joel Embiid. I just genuinely think that it would be easier to build around Embiid. He's a big man, and what he's proficient at is banging down low. So it's going to be natural for him to be down low. It's not like you're going to have to fight for space 
between a point guard and your big down low. Ben Simmons is phenomenal. He's got great court vision, and somehow, even with not without being able to shoot, he still gives you incredible production night in and night out. But that being said, I genuinely do believe it would be harder to build a team around him. That said, the 76ers are going to be looking for some trades. Now, while nothing has been discussed yet, we can just kind of think through some different places for Ben Simmons to where it would change the trajectory of his career. I mean, naturally, the first place you can think of is the Golden State Warriors. And in my last video at the NBA, I was just talking about how now the Warriors super, super team has been blown up. The NBA has so much parody to it. And Ben Simmons going to the Warriors would almost squash that parody. And here's why. Because they still have Russell. They still have Thompson and Curry. So they have plenty of shooting from the outside. And while Draymond Green is an all-world defender, you really don't know what he's going to give you on a night-in, night-out basis from the offense. And that's not a shot at Draymond Green. That's just, you don't know whether he's going to give you 9 points one night or whether he's going to give you 20 points one night. You know he's going to be a force on the court. You know that his value is going to be worth it, but it's in those points, right? You just don't know what he's going to give you. But if you put in Ben Simmons in that lineup... You never have to shoot again from the three or even be asked about it because you have Steph, Clay, and Russell who can shoot from the three. Not only that, but it helps out those three because now the spacing is all out of whack. You cannot press up on the three-point line when they have a seven-foot almost point guard driving down just yamming on people. You have to give him more of a cushion to allow him to come up. It's just like how LeBron started guarding Ben Simmons and it kind of turned into a meme where LeBron would just be standing at the free throw line staring at him, just waiting for him to come down because he's like, I know you're not going to shoot it. Even if I gave you all day, you won't shoot it. But if he goes to the Warriors, he never has to shoot again. He maximizes what he is best at. He maximizes what everybody is best at. Because now all of a sudden, you cannot just sell out the inside of the court to go stop Clay, to go stop Steph and them. You have to respect the middle. And if you overcommit to the middle, he's going to kick it out to Clay or Steph and they're going to bang in a three. That would be disgusting. Now, do I want it to happen? Not really. I'm loving the parody in the NBA right now. But that would be an incredible match for Ben Simmons. Where else? I look at a team almost like Portland. And you'd have to do some things. You'd have to move some things around, right, in order to get it to work. But in theory, it could work. It wouldn't be as seamless, right? But in theory, you could get it to work. And all of this is kind of getting to the point of... Ben would have to kind of play a more hybrid point guard role than a true point guard because at the Warriors, they already have Steph. And so he would have to kind of create a hybrid point guard role. But we've seen that in the NBA with kind of what LeBron does when Rondo might be on the court as well, where Rondo will be the point guard one play and then LeBron's taking it up and it's kind of this hybrid system. And you could absolutely do the same thing with Ben Simmons. So we'll see about that, but here's what I do just truly believe. That the 76ers run, that's over, right? In its current form, that's done. I don't think you can get a new coach to come in there and just clean it up because right now your two best players both rely on being on the inside and they're both fighting each other for the space and opportunity in order to be able to succeed and that doesn't seem like a winning formula for me. But that's it for this video. Stick around. We'll have a bunch more coming. And like I said at the beginning, be sure to hit that like button. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and just nail that bell notification so you know every time we're going to be uploading today because we still have a lot to talk about from high school football recruiting. We've got some college football to talk about into some NFL. So stick around and we'll see you soon.